big thanks to Hover for sponsoring the video. They host domain names, including this one, with a very nice surprise in it. More on that later. Enjoy the video. So whenever there's a brand new PC game that's creating a ton of buzz, the first thing I do is look up the system requirements. And for Elden Ring, you allegedly need a $600 computer to play it. Unless you don't. This is my $100 PC and it has one goal and one goal only, to beat an Elden Ring boss. And I'll let you guys be the judge of whether or not it's playable. Regardless, I didn't realize how hard this would be. Admittedly, I didn't really do much planning, but I knew there were three things that I needed for this project. A quad-core CPU that's 10 years old or younger, eight gigs of RAM, and a video card that supports DirectX 12, either out of the box or through some kind of software workaround. I started my search on March 1st and spent three days looking for affordable computer parts with no leads. I even ended up impulse purchasing a CPU that I ended up not needing. <sighs> what am I gonna do with you? The future looked grim to say the least until I came across this clutch listing of a computer shop liquidating their current assets because of a change in ownership. The timing could not have been any better. So I visited the store, the owner was super nice, and I noticed that they had a ton of different retro computer parts. It felt like I was in 2006 or something. I waltzed through their computers that were scheduled for recycling, and I came across this old AMD computer that just stole my heart the second I saw it. It had the CPU, the motherboard, the case, of course, and a Wi-Fi card. And if it worked, it would be a phenomenal starting point. So after bringing it home and calming its nerves. Do you want water or anything? I'm gonna go. I hooked up a power supply and oh, it worked. Oh, it was housing four gigs of RAM and a Phantom 2 quad core CPU. So not quite meeting my requirements, but a good starting point. Now we just need everything else hundred dollars. This is where the fun really started. The journey started pretty easy because I had an old power supply sitting around that I bought for $13 last year during an EVGA B-Stock summer sale. It's one of the few impulse purchases that have actually worked out because, well, I'm using it. As for RAM, I needed at least eight gigs for Elden Ring and it had to be DDR2 because of motherboard compatibility. DDR2 is old enough to drive in the US at this point. That means it must be affordable. I thought to myself as I put my clown costume on. Not in the slightest. I wanted at least eight gigs of RAM and with only two RAM slots, well, you can do the math. eBay had the correct configuration for a measly $80, just over half of my budget. Great. Thankfully, AliExpress saved the day with a two by four gig configuration for only 16. So thank you, AliExpress. When in doubt, China is there to help you out. The video card was obviously tough. Now I wanted DirectX 12 compatibility out of the box. There are software workarounds for Elden Ring, but out of the box compatibility is always preferred. And I only had about $50 to spend. I sent out dozens of feelers on hardware swap. I probably got kind of annoying doing so, but thankfully the pestering paid off. Another day. Slay. That was good, right? We were able to get a GTX 760 for $45. It's about GTX 1050 performance, and we will probably need to do some software workarounds, but for $45 at the time, it was a great choice. And lastly, storage. I just needed something that could hold Elden Ring, so a 120 gig SSD for around $10 was the goal, but I ended up finding this 256 gig SSD brand new for $20. So we opted for that. So, I don't need a serial killer. Our journey accumulated to a Phenom 2 955 quad-core CPU, plus the case and the motherboard for free. We got a 450 watt power supply for $13, eight gigs of DDR2 for 16, a 256 gig SSD for $20, and a GTX 760 for $45. I also bought an aftermarket CPU cooler for $15, just in case I wanted to overclock and to make sure that Phantom 2 CPU doesn't start a fire. Total for everything, $110. After some headaches installing Windows 10, the PC was up and running, and I even got a nice overclock on the CPU and on the video card. But then my luck started to run out. <sighs> While I was finalizing my overclock, my PC crashed, 
and it did not turn back on. Initially, I thought it was the power supply that killed it, but I ruled that out pretty quickly. So what happened? What did it? Me. It was me. Apparently my overclock was a little bit too juicy for my motherboard to handle and I blew one of the MOSFETs. I was able to confirm this with a multimeter. There's only one beep, the MOSFET is fine, so... Alright, that's one. No beep on this leg. But if it has two beeps... That's messed up, so this MOSFET right here on top of R25 is dead. Need to fix it. Thankfully, there's only one MOSFET that I need to replace. How hard could that be? Right? Right? I screwed this one up big time, boys. I tried desoldering the MOSFET with a heat gun and ended up triggering my fire alarm. After that, I tried a desoldering kit, which didn't end up working and was extremely hard to clean up. I finally reattempted the heat gun method with some flux and doing it outside, of course, and it worked. The MOSFET popped right off, but it took the contact pads with it, so I can't replace it. Yeah, it was uh, it was a mess to say the least. So I had a feeling that my repair attempts would fail. So I preemptively ordered another motherboard just in case. So past Ozzy, thank you. You're welcome. But my excitement quickly died when I realized that the new motherboard that I ordered only supports either four gigs of DDR3 memory, single stick, or four gigs of DDR4 memory, also a single stick. I can't use that. <laughs> Playing Elden Ring on four gigs of RAM and a 13 year old CPU just seems like a nightmare waiting to happen. I looked through all my options, but I decided it's best for me to just cut my losses and order another motherboard that I know would work with all of my components. I got one from eBay and everything was working properly again. Now, did I consider overclocking even though that's what killed my previous motherboard and increased the price of the entire build? Yeah, I did consider it, and I ended up doing it anyway. But this time, I did not increase the CPU voltage, and everything was fine. So I ran some preliminary benchmarks just to give you guys an idea of how this $100-ish dollar PC compares to a PC that is recommended, at least on the minimum side, for Elden Ring. The scores are on screen, but the Phenom CPU is a measly 200% slower than the minimum CPU listed for Elden Ring, and the 760 is a minuscule 100% slower than the GPU listed. Hey, it could be worse. So the first time boot of Elden Ring left me a little nervous because, well, it didn't work. But I knew this going into it. After hacking into Elden Ring's mainframe, and by that I mean just copying some DLL files into the installation folder, we were able to get a boot. And if you want more details on exactly how to do this, then I will leave all the instructions down in the description. After that, it was off to the races. Can this $100 PC play Elden Ring? Let's see. After playing around with a few different resolutions and settings, I found that 1080p on the lowest was the best. It still looked really good. And because I was CPU limited, lowering the resolution did not improve performance. It just made everything uglier. Now sadly, MSI Afterburner isn't working in this game and neither does Xbox Game Bar for me probably because of my mainframe hacking. So the Steam FPS overlay is the only metric I can really offer. In the opening scene, we sat in the upper 20s, sometimes hitting the low 30s, which was a pleasant surprise for me because that's definitely playable. And not that I didn't have faith in the PC. Actually, no, I didn't really have that much faith in the PC. I was a bit nervous when I got to the opening boss because A, I suck at Elden Ring, and B, I knew that performance would suffer. But still, low to mid 20s was good enough. But once we got to the open world, it got a little rough. We started dipping into the high teens, which is totally not ideal. Combined with the fact that I was still figuring out the game and exploring, it was a bit frustrating. But man, do not underestimate the human body's willingness to adapt. After a few minutes of pain and suffering and turmoil and hurt, my eyes suggested. I got lost in the world super quickly, and I suppose when you play a game as good as Elden Ring, you're a lot more forgiving with poor performance. You'll do whatever it takes to have fun, or at least convince yourself that you're having fun. No, but really, even at 20 FPS, it was a blast. After over five hours of gameplay on my astrologer, it was time to meet my fate. All the sweat, all the blood, all the tears 
are culminating up to this very moment, the first boss in Elden Ring. And it was low-key unplayable. Now, thankfully, it's only kind of unplayable when I was facing the direction that I entered the boss battle in. If I was facing the other direction, it was great. Better than open world exploration. With that knowledge in mind, I was able to make do. Somehow. No! Does that count? Does that count? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Let's go, we did it. We did it, 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 we did it. We beat an Elder Ring boss on a $100 computer. So proud of us. Good job, guys. Brava. Brava. And that is the legend on how I defeated an Elder Ring boss on a $100 PC. Now I get to decide, do I want to do this for the next 15 or so bosses, or do I just want to play Elden Ring on my main computer? I think the answer is clear with that. If I'm being completely honest, I am very excited to finally play this game on my main computer at over 23 FPS on average. I do firmly believe though, if all I had was this $100 computer, I can make it work to where I could level up my character to max and still have a great time doing it. But since I don't have to put myself through that pain, I just won't. <laughs> now to recap and answer a few questions. Was it playable? Yes, I'd say so. Was it worth it? No. I was able to defeat bosses and add almost six, seven hours of gameplay on it. And so that shows that, yeah, it's definitely playable. I think part of that is a testament to the fact that I grew up playing games at very low FPS on our family computer. But between the stresses of trying to install Windows on an older platform, all the auxiliary payments that I had to make to fix the computer, and then troubleshooting woes, it just was not worth it. I learned a lot, still not worth it. Now I'm sure many of you already knew that going into this video, and so this isn't a guide on how to build a $100 computer to play new AAA titles. That would be very difficult to do right now. But if you don't have a lot of money and you want a computer that is worth it, an option that you have is to buy an office computer, upgrade the power supply, and then buy a video card as well. This is an option we've been parroting for so long. It'll cost you probably around $200 right now to do that comfortably. And it's still something I recommend to new builders. The reason why I didn't choose that option is because it's just a little bit boring. I wanted something that would be a little bit more exciting, something that would be a little bit more fun, and I really wanted to challenge myself. And going the office pre-built route just isn't something that's challenging. I have a lot of videos on that already. And lastly, are the system requirements correct? I can make an entire video on system requirements and why they're usually overestimated than what they actually are. I will say this though, these system requirements are accurate, but they're not precise. An i5-8400 and GTX 1060 is maybe somewhere in the ballpark of minimum requirements, but it's not exact. You can definitely get by with a GTX 1050 or a 1050 Ti and a slower processor, but putting the i5-8400 and the GTX 1060 creates a buffer for the publisher and the developers so they don't get a bunch of angry customers who are playing it at 28 FPS instead of 35 and return the game or give it a bad review. So at least you're guaranteed that a 1060 will work, even if slower cards work too. Regardless, Elden Ring was a blast to play, and because I want you guys to have as much fun as I did, I'm gonna give away a copy with the help of the sponsor, Hover. So I haven't told you all this yet, but I do want to expand Oz Talks beyond just PC builds and experiments like this video into other things that I enjoy, like building silly and fun robots. Think Mark Rober without the cool hat, or Michael Reeves, but way less funny. So I just made a website, part of it is still in progress, where I'm gonna put some of my personal passions that range from YouTube to other fun endeavors. And I bought the domain name using Hover. Hover makes it really easy to buy a domain name and they have a ton of fun extensions that you can use as well. And they also work with a lot of big website hosting and building brands like Squarespace, Shopify, and Weebly. So you can connect your domain name to your website really easily. A website domain name is also super important because it connects the site itself to the brand and what you want to convey. So my website, oztalkshw.fun, 
I think is really nice because it doesn't take itself too seriously and it's a great way for me to express other parts of myself that I may not do professionally on the channel. And since domain hosting is separate from the website hosting itself, I do have a little bit more flexibility. Like the fact that I bought my website domain name for only $5 for the entire year on Hover, I don't know if I'd be able to do that elsewhere. Like I mentioned previously, Hover has over 400 domain extensions and I generally prefer the dot fund for personal passion projects or a fun little portfolio website. And if you're new to Hover, then you'll get 10% off your first year on every domain extension that they have. That means that the dot fund domain will be about a penny a day once you account for this discount code. Ask yourself this, when was the last time you saw a penny in real life? Probably never. That's how cheap it is. Go to hover.com slash OzToxHW for the discount and to sign up now. And if you go to OzToxHW.fun slash giveaway, you'll find a really nice surprise, AKA the Elden Ring giveaway. I'll announce the winner sometime within the next two-ish weeks. But that's it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you liked it, let me know. I'll try to make more fun, cool videos like this in the future. What is the cheapest computer that we can build that can still technically run a AAA game? Maybe I'll make this a series, let me know. All right, I'll see you guys later. Peace. <sighs>